about six months ago when I had to perform the best after a, a very, very good first round on the IMO team selection test. I failed. On day two, after solving all three questions and being one of three people who solved three questions in day one, without geometry being on day one, which is my strongest topic, I came into day two looking forward to continue the success and I failed. I didn't perform well and it was due to my lack of skill back then and I would say lack of experience with number theory and my lack of preparation that I failed. That was six months ago. Throughout these six months, I pursued a lot of problems. I've probably done over hundreds of problems from different contests, probably closer to a thousands. And quite frankly, now I think number theory is my second strongest topic. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to attempt a problem three of the team selection test for the IMO that I didn't solve. And I'm going to take revenge for my hideous performance and my failure. And I'm going to make myself feel better. So here was the question. You have a, b, b positive integers such that a plus one and b plus one are perfect squares. And you need to show that the GCD of a, b plus one is also a perfect square. Now, so what I wrote during the contest is I started with a plus one um, being equal to m squared. And then I continued with b plus one equals n squared. Then similarly, we know that AB is equal to K squared. And finally, we need to show that the GCD plus one is a perfect square. This essentially hints to us that we need to write this. So let the GCD be uh, some integer D and then set A as dx and B as dy with the GCD of x and y being one. After this, what we can do is we can say that d squared uh, xy is equal to k squared. And since k squared and d squared are both squares, we can conclude that xy is also a square. Now, since the GCD of x and y is 1, we may conclude that x is equal to u squared for some integer u, and y is equal to v squared or some integer v. Okay, and now we obviously need to work with a plus one and b plus one being uh, squares. So we can write uh, d u squared plus one equals m squared and d v squared plus one equals n squared. Now, we want to show, we want to show that d plus one, so the GCD plus one is essentially a square as well. So it's in the set of integer square. And if we now just separately look at this and this, we may notice that both of them are Pell's equation with the same d. And this is the Pell equation, but for this coefficient being 1. And if you watch my videos on Pell's equation, I think it was Agmo 2016, problem 3 or problem 6, 
And then we can use this to finish the problem, I think. So if I take uh, the minimal solution, I don't remember the technical term. So um, essentially we have a solution x0, y0. Um, that's our basis. And the idea is that all solutions can be written uh, as x0 plus uh, y0 root d and then to the power of k uh, is equal to xk uh, plus yk root d and then xk yk is our solution as well so x0 is y x0 y0 is a solution and xk yk are all solutions that's what's important okay um and what does that mean well since we know that uh, u m and v n are both coming out uh of x k y k we essentially uh know that we want to show that x zero we have one so the reasoning is because because uh, d plus one is z squared so this means that u equals one is a solution so x zero equals one is a solution and therefore this kind of hints that we just need to show that the Pell equation work. And what we also notice about u and v is that they're co-prime due to x equals u squared and y equals v squared. So we know that uh, the GCD of u and v is equal to 1. And from here, it's actually enough for us to conclude that the problem is finished. And the reasoning is, well, uh, for example, we can do the same trick as we did in the Egmont question. And this trick is essentially to uh, use the recursive formula for xk and yk in order to get a bit of more sense what's going on. Because essentially, if I look at uh, the solution xk plus 1, like this, uh, plus yk plus 1 root d, we look at this solution here, and we look at it as xk plus yk root d, and then we times it by x0 plus y0 root d. The reason why we do this is because we can do this is because uh, the left-hand side is x0 plus y0 root d to the power of k plus 1, and the right-hand side is x0 plus y0 root d to the power of k, and one more, so they're obviously equal. Uh, this essentially yields that coefficient x to xk plus 1, which is without the root d. Uh, and this one is equal to xk x0. plus d times yk and then y0. And then yk plus 1 it is obviously equal to yk x0 as it's yk plus 1 is the coefficient next to d squared plus the coefficient next to root d not d squared root d, and plus uh, xk uh, y0. And note that uh, our u and v, they're actually the values of yk plus 1. So therefore, we know that u is equal to some y index i, and v is equal to some y index j. And obviously, we want to use that the GCD of u and v is 1, 
because without it, it's obviously not true. So essentially, you want to show that y0 should divide yi. And actually, from the current formula, it's actually pretty easy to see y by induction. So obviously, y0 divides y1 because they're just equal. But from now on, we know that if by induction, y0 divides yk, then y0 divides yk x0 and also divides xk y0. And therefore, it divides yk plus 1. Therefore, by induction, we claim that y0 divides yi for every uh, single i. And therefore, we know that y0 must divide u and must divide v. However, since their GCD was 1, 1, we may conclude that y0 is equal to 1. Since y0 is equal to 1, then we know that uh, the Pell's equation uh, dy squared plus 1 equals x squared. It must have a solution in y0 equals 1 because that's our definition of y0. And therefore, we conclude that d plus 1 equals x0 squared. And we're done. So I think that took not that long. So our revenge is successful. On a motivational standpoint, I just want to say that Olympiads will be coming soon. And obviously right now, Olympiads are only starting to happen. You will win some Olympiads for sure. You'll do well, but you'll also fail some. It is important to realize that life is not just Olympiads. Olympiads may be a big part of it, but in 10 years time, you will just have the memories of you and your friends having some fun, solving some questions together, and that's it. And value your time. Uh, while you're still able to enjoy yourself in school and you don't have to worry about work, about uh, taxes and so on, uh, enjoy the time you have and value it, value it. Because at some day you'll be looking back and just remembering the fun times you have with your friends and you won't be remembering the thousand of days of preparation that you put in, into an Olympiad. And remember that if you fail, it's not the end of the world. You may feel sad, but that's just how the story goes. And you win some, you fail some. That's just life. On this note, thank you everyone for joining in. I hope I earned your subscription to my channel. Please like the video, comment. I'll appreciate all the support, all the positive comments you've written. I hope the audio was better this time. So yeah, uh, thank you everyone for joining in and have a blessed day.